part five of build a user support area using Microsoft Office. That's right, part five, folks. My videos are like waiting for buses. You wait ages for one to come along, and then I send out five at the same time. What I'm going to do with this one um, is I'm going to take the previous uh, part four, the feedback form, and I'm going to take it at the next step. I should have done this later on. Should have done this later, but I thought, get it out of the way. Get the feedback form out of the way. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the responses. A um, couple of my owners have sort of done some demo ones to sort of give you an idea about how that looks. Um, but what I've also had um, requested when I did forms uh, on a virtual training course a while back is uh, how do you reset the form and remove the responses and start again? Uh, and there's been similar sort of questions about resetting the, the form responses to zero um, or bug fixing uh, without the uh, form changes being live. So I'm going to do all of that uh, all in one action. I'm going to show you how to create a master published environment uh, for your forms. So you can try this. It may, may work. You may not like it, but it's an option there that we're going to open up to you. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the responses, the requests for channels and videos, and I'm going to have them set up so that they uh, come to me as an email, as a request. I will approve them or reject them. Uh, and then when they're approved, I'll get my Power Automate flow to automatically create the channel or the video. So all I've got to do in response to people saying, can I have this channel using that form? I approve. It gets built. So make a nice fluent sort of uh, process. And we're going to do lots of those. There's going to be lots of those in this office support environment. OK, let's take this on. Let's go. OK, so it looks like Amanda and Barry have added some demo responses to the feedback survey. And we're going to use that to show you how the uh, analytics come back and how we can look at the responses. So I'm just going to go into my Office 365 tab and right click and open forms in a new one. There we go. Now, it's a group form. Don't forget we added this into a team which belongs to an Office 365 group. So we'll go to group forms, click and open that feedback survey. Oh, seven responses. That's quite a nice range for testing. So here we go. This is how it works. You can see that in the responses, I've got seven responses. It takes around about 38 seconds on average for people to complete this. Um, and if I go down to the list below, you get some nice quick graphical idea about where the popularity of where we've been putting our effort into getting this promoted. Uh, we have some other responses here. So we can keep these separate from the, the first one, but we can still take these in consideration in case there's a channel opening. Although I don't know if there's any channeling at the promotional point of gossip at the coffee bar. Maybe put some posters on the wall. Hmm. OK, uh, rate the following features. Uh, there you go. You're getting this sort of um, popularity of where so it's quite strong in the search and navigation and ease of use. It's quite excellent across that middle. And if I look at the bottom there, I've added some new questions. And this is about what would you like to see new? So if they want a new channel or a new video, a new training session, um, they, they can request that. And I can hover over these and I can click on those and see what. So we have three requests for channels. But you'll see that with the responses, there's um, more details where we can look at the information provided. So with the actual three channels, if I click more details, I can see these are the people that have raised the request. These are the responses. So ooh, VBA seems to be popular. Uh, and we'll deal with the responses quite cleverly uh, later. Now, the, 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 the thing is, we've got this uh, with demo responses, and then when we would go live, we're going to have them mixed with the real responses, so it's going to be a bit tricky. And plus the fact, if I do any changes to the questions, if I mess it up, I'm messing up the live one. It saves as you work. So a little recommendation, um, A, so that we can sort of protect the drafting of our form, and B, if we ever want to res uh, reset the responses back to zero, there's a simple way of doing this, and that is to go back to the form, click the ellipsis here, and then choose to copy it. Okay, so that is the copied version. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this one and change the, put the word draft in there so that the, my owners know that that is the draft version. And then with the copied one, I'm going to just remove that 
brackets three. But you'll notice with the one that I've copied, there's no responses. So when you copy the form, it resets the responses back to zero and you can start all over again. This is really good if you want to do the form per month or per quarter and you want to gather the new responses each time. All you do is you copy the form. You could put the month in brackets in the heading. And as you saw, if I want to gather the responses together per month as well as separately, I can take all the responses and put them into the same Excel table. So I can just merge them together and create a, a grand total. But I can have a copy of the form for my monthly or quarterly rollout of the survey. So simple little tool, simple little feature to get around that. So if anyone asks about how do I reset it back to zero or keep different responses per month, just copy the form. That's it. So the other thing I wanted to do in this video was take any requests uh, in particular for channels. Uh, let's go into more details. There we go. So we've had some different requests for channels. And what I'd like to do is have them uh, raised to, to me as a notification so I can approve or reject them. And if I like the idea, I'll approve and have them automatically created. So I want the channels to be built for me. So I'm going to create a brand new Power Automate flow to do this now if you're new to power automate don't panic i will be uh, a creating a beginner's guide to power automate that will be a video that i'm going to put in here later but secondly this isn't a very complex one so that I'm, I, there will be a lot of actions but i will talk through each of them so that you can pick them up um, and even relevantly new beginners should be able to take this power automate and replicate it now, I'm not going to go into Power Automate. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go into my General tab um, in my Office User Support team. And I'm going to add a tab there to Flow. OK. And in there, I'm just going to type in Flow. There you go, and create a new Flow. It hasn't been updated to Power Automate yet. I think Microsoft are working on that bit as of the time of this video. So there we go, a little bit of tips and tricks which I'm happy with. Click Save. Okay, so that adds a brand new Flow tab into my team. A bit of a heads up, when you add a Flow Power Automate uh, tab into Teams, everyone in the team can manage the flows. Everyone, that includes the members. Um, I'm, I'm going to show in another video how to manage flow environments within Teams. So how you can get the members to be run only and then you can choose the owners that will then manage the flows with you. So I'll, I'll do that in another video. But for now, I'm going to go and create a new flow. Now this is going to be automated. In other words, the user will indirectly trigger it by doing something like creating a form, uploading files, that sort of thing. In this case, uh, they will. I'm going to go into the here, just make sure I'm seeing all the right trigger data connectors. So there, when a new response is submitted, brilliant and I'll give that the name raise suggestions for approval okay I'm gonna click create so that's my trigger um, that step there the top there's my trigger and what I do need to do is pick the form that I'm working with now chances are when you create f uh, forms in Office 365 group environments, they won't appear there. Normally your forms appear here. Uh, not a problem. If I go into the forms tab, if I go to any one of these tabs at the top here, preferably the questions one, because what you're looking for at the top, if it lets me zoom in, is this bit here. It says form ID equal, and I want to copy all of that. Now, as I said, if you do this in the questions tab, it's a little bit cleaner to do. Um, so go into the questions tab, select all of that big GUID, big ID there, copy it, and then go back to your trigger. And in the form ID, there should be an option that says enter custom value, always use that. And then type, in this case, paste in the form ID. So now I'm going to click new step. And what I want to do is I want it to pick up the responses that the users filled in. So if you remember, I had a question in here that says, 
would you like to see something new in any of the current services? And they're clicking on one of these. And I want to capture, did they pick channel? Did they pick video? Training session? If they pick any of those three, uh, then I want to process accordingly. Now, to do that, I'm going to use a control called switch. And switch allows you to assess different values of a property or of a variable. Uh, in this case, the property I want to pick up is the response that they did. Now, here's the thing. When you get a response, when you get a new file uploaded, when you get a OneDrive file uploaded, when you create a new item in, in something, uh, like a, a SharePoint list, um, it doesn't give you all the properties. Now, what I need to do in between these is then add an action into forms that says get the response details. That's the only action that's actually in the forms data connector at the moment. So give that a click. Uh, again, I need to pull up the UI of the form ID. Now I could just paste that value in again. That coincides it with the one at the top that's the trigger for the person raising the form. So go to that same form and I want to get the ID from the trigger. So whatever form was raised and caused the trigger, I want to get that and connect that in there. So to do that, there's only one option, list of responses, uh, list of response notifications, response ID. So the ID is giving me the exact form that that person filled in. Now that I've done that, I'm going to switch, click on the on, and look, I get a whole stack of new features, new ideas there. And what I want is that question that said, would you like to see something new in any of the current blah, 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 blah. Would you like to see something new? Yeah, click that one. One we're looking for. So the first case is if it equals channel. I can then click the plus box and add the other two. So video and the other one was a training session. I think training session should be training topic. Um, but we'll look at the wording another time. Not too bothered about that one. So there you go. And I could have a, an other. I could put other in there. There's a default. In other words, if I don't pick anything else, I can use that. Uh, I'm going to stick with channel. And I'm going to add an action. And I'm going to create a brand new approval process. So in the approvals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create. I don't need to put any uh, actions between creating the approval and waiting for it. So I'm going to do the start and wait for approval all in one go. Uh, so the approval type will be one that says first response. So one of the, the first owner to see this request, they respond to it. Marvellous. Title. Um, channel, re channel request received in feedback survey. Who's that assigned to? I, I'm going to assign it to myself for now. So... But what I will do eventually is assign that to Office 365 Group and get them, uh, Barry and Amanda, etc., to to uh, approve that. Details. Now, this is the little body area that says, um, please review the channel request made by, I want to grab the person's name of the person who raised that form because I have identified them. Made by a responder's email. At, and I'm going to get the time it was submitted. And that gives an idea about how long ago the channel request was made, so we can we can evaluate if we need to get a move on if we've not uh, approved that in time. Channel requested, colon. And then in there, I'm going to go and grab the... What channel would you like to see? Uh, and that's where they've typed in the name of the channel there. Okay, so what I'd like to do is do a hyperlink to the form so that the users, so the owner can review it in detail if they need to. Feedback form. Okay, so channel comes in, I raise it to approval, and what it will do at that point is wait for the approval to come in, and then I'm going to add an action. And the next action now is to process that approval. So the way you do that is you add another control with a condition. And in the condition, you grab the approval response or outcome. 
There it is, the outcome of the approval. And you ask, did the outcome equal approve or reject? So I'm looking to see, did they actually approve that request? If they did, that's where all the actions are done. If not, I will send a notification to the requester to say, your channel has not been, I'm not going to say rejected, I'm not going to put any negative in there. What I like to say is, your channel request has been kept for later review. Channel request held for later review. And in the body, just a bit of detail about that. Your request for the channel, I'm going to concatenate in there the channel name they requested. So I'm going back into the list of details from the start and wait for an approval. Uh, oops, no. So we're going to get the details from the get response details. And I want that channel name again. There you go. So your request for the channel. Um, not be actioned at this time but we will hold it for later review there we go so channel request held for later review brilliant uh, and then on the other side I want the one that's the positive so I'm going to cheat I'm going to click the ellipses to the right of this send me an email notification. I'm going to copy that into clipboard and then add an action. Go to my clipboard and paste it. Now because I've got two of them side by side with similar names, I'm going to expand all those actions again and rename them. Approved email notification and let's say send on hold email notification there we go now I always like using those send an email response um, in my flows to do something quickly test it get it done and make sure that main outline works and then what I'll do is I'll replace them later with proper Outlook um, email messages with a bit more body a bit more richer in the content so i'll probably add that in an extended video later on down the line so watch out for that video because it's going to go into a lot more detail detail and tidy this flow up a lot more so brilliant okay proof was done add an action and now i'm going to create that channel so going to go into the teams Microsoft Teams, scroll down the page, and I'm going to type in channel, because I'm just like that, you see. Create a channel. Now, it's still in its preview state, but when I've been using it, it seems to work quite nice. I'm not going into any particulars. So, I'll create a channel. Okay, okay and it's asking me for the team ID and if I click on the drop down and choose the Microsoft Office user support environment marvelous name of the channel so again that is in the form they filled in let's grab the what channel would you like to see now I could get clever what I could have done with the approval form is when they click approve you can add action notes, comments, and I could have had the comments so that uh, they could tidy up the channel name. Maybe the person's misspelled it, I've done it in lowercase. And what I'd like to do is have the, the, the prover go, yeah, this is a great idea. Let's make it spelt like this. And then I could grab from the comments the tidied version of the channel name. For now, though, I just want to see if this works. So that's job done. Uh, and I now want to see if that works. So I'm going to save that flow. And I'm going to test it just by performing the trigger. So it's going to wait for me to finish the form filling. So I'm going to perform the trigger. Click Save and Test. And I'm going to now go back to Microsoft Forms and test that form. Let's preview and fill it in. So, team meeting. 
Excellent, 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 excellent. I would like a channel. What would you like? I would like to see, I don't know, the donkey channel. See if anyone will approve that one. Submit. Okay, now that I've done that, let's click back on the tab. Flow's running. Just expand that. Yep, it's found the right case, which is the channel name. And if I expand that, yep, it's now created the approval and it's waiting for someone to, well, I'll say someone, me, to respond to it. So if I go back to my Office 365 tab, go and run Outlook. I can also get this in the Power Automate. Don't forget, because all of your approval requests goes into Power Automate as well. So it's come in, I've got the email, uh, requested by me. Please review the channel. Uh, they want to open a channel called Donkey. Oh, I like that idea. I think we're going to approve a Donkey channel. So reason, uh, this is where I said I could have put in a title. I could have put in there Donkey or Donkey and Mule and had the channel name called that. So I could have had Donkey and Mule as the proper channel name. And uh, I could have picked up that value instead and used that as a channel name. But as I said, I um, haven't done that yet. So... Uh, Sounds like a good idea. Click Submit. So being the person who raised it, I should also get an email back now saying your channel has been accepted, blah, 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 blah. Actually, I forgot to change the message, so it's going to tell me it's rejected. Yeah, I forgot to change the message, so I'll change that. But, nevertheless, if I go into Microsoft Teams now, I've got a donkey channel. <laughs> so it's worked. It's worked beautifully. The only thing I'll do, as I said, edit that um, email. I've got carried away. So your request for the channel. Now, the only problem is I would like to put in a link to the team. But, obviously, I can't do that because the channel... Um, action is after whenever you're working with content in here and you want to use dynamic content it's got to be above where you're working so i've got to have at least created the channel before uh, doing that so that's not a problem i can drag that one above uh, so the the channels which makes sense it should create the channel first and then send the email and i should go into teams So I'm going to get the team, and then inside my new one, it says, there you go, I'm going to put in the link to the team bit here. And this is just a lazy way of doing it. I could do it with a fancy link, which I like to do anyway, but let's just go and grab the web address of the team itself. Okay, so I'm going to save it, test it. I'm going to test a new run. I'm not going to test the previous one because that's already got a channel in there called Donkey. Going to fill off forming again let's do a training course average 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 channel what should we look for now let's look for the rabbit channel don't panic I can delete these channels at the end and we're not gonna have a I'm gonna leave them in there superb okay let's go and have a look that should now be running it is. It's going up it's down the switch. I found it again. I've already had the email come in. Ding -a -dee dong. Click. Um, please approve the rabbit channel. Yeah, let's do that. And that looks like it's all done, 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 done. Fantastic. Go back to my email. Just had a confirmation. Request for the channel has been approved and will be created soon. Check the new channel in there. Got the link. I haven't turned it into a hyperlink. I could do that. It's not a problem. But for now, they should be able to. That's all I wanted to do, as I said. Just see if I can change that, get it working. Brilliant. Look at that. So I'm going to tidy that up. I'm going to be uh, adding the links at the terminates in case they do approve a channel that already exists with the same name. I don't want it sort of uh, causing a problem. So I'm going to put all the bells and whistles in. Uh, if you want to see those bells and whistles, uh, that could be another video. But I think for the beginners, for those that want to sort of get through that process and test it, this is perfect.
quite a lot to take in there but i hope you've enjoyed the tips and tricks that i've put into this particular video and if you're new to power automate don't forget i'm going to be creating a power automate sort of how to uh, sort of for beginners uh, and that's going to be covering later on and that will be a low down channel video so there'll be a link to that one when that comes along um usual thing please please subscribe because all these builder user support um, are going to be rolling out over the next few days um so you'll be kept in touch as when those have been released contact me on facebook twitter linkedin please you know if you've got any suggestions any ideas you would like me to put into this environment um i will flavor them in and, and if they're not part of our real world environment that we are building i'll do a demo anyway um, I've got a backup copy of that team environment so I can do demos and have a tinker. So thanks again for watching. Stay safe and have fun.